Hey, everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you? Uh, it's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue here today for Cricut Chat. And very excited to show you some really cool new projects. Um, and I just want to save this. So that's for tomorrow. Um, Easter box cards. So good morning. Um, let me just save this. I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit kind of rushing today because uh, I just got word that I can bring my son to get tested for his COVID, which he doesn't have, I don't think he has it, but okay, you know, I, I understand the need. Um, and so we have to go get tested right after the show. And then I just wanted to remind you that tomorrow I will not be on at nine o'clock because I have to go get my mammogram. And by the way, if you're a woman, get your annual mammogram. Um, don't ignore it because it's not good to ignore and they can usually catch things. Um, so that's my little spiel about coming from a cancer, cancer survivor, a breast cancer survivor. Mammograms are so important every year, okay? Uh, <laughs> so hello, hello, everyone. It's Thursday. Cannot believe how much time flies when you're having so much fun. And today we're going to have even more fun. So we are going to be doing um, some what I call or what are called cascade cards. I'm going to put two of them together, but I have four samples that I'm going to show you. Um, these, they all go together the same. And I believe there are six cards that are cask or are cascade cards on those two cartridges. Um, sorry, image sets that we had, um, we had talked about yesterday, okay? The, um, but I'm going to show you four of them, and I'm going to show you how to put together two. They go together pretty simply. Once you, um, hi Terry, once you uh, kind of get the the idea. So let me show you. Um, let me show you what I got. Okay, so there's one, two. I got three. I don't know if I have three. Okay, yeah. Um, some of these I did envelopes for, but sorry, I just dropped something out of it, out of this one. Um, some of them I did envelopes for, but the other two I didn't. Um, and I used a little glitter on one of them. So here we go. Here is the envelope for the barn one. I think some people were interested. So this is a cascade card. That's what they call this cascade card because it's got kind of like an accordion fold to it. And things go in. It starts tall at the top and things go like he, um, smaller so that they can all fit. So here's the one that's like a barn that's like brimming with all kinds of animals and um, it sort of accordion fold right here so you'll be able to um, to fold it flat and put it in a envelope which I made for this one so there's the envelope that I made and that one's the barn one um, and the next one is I did not make the envelope for hey, I'm trying to fit this back in the envelope. Okay. The next one is um, this one, which I really like, but I had a hard time cutting it. So that's why I decided not to show you assembly because I thought I would probably lose my brain, but it's essentially the same thing. See that it's, it's a, it's a card and it's folded um, on like two pieces that are folded together. So to make like these different levels and um and then it looks flat it looks like this i thought a sentiment would look really adorable here like join us for movie night or you know or um let's celebrate or i don't know something like that or just for a popcorn lover or something really cute card um there so the next one is this one it's a uh tiered birthday cake. I think this one's probably my favorite or 
second favorite. Um, and I'm going to show you how to put this one together. See how it is set up? Or I'll show you the bottom too. It's a, called an accordion fold. And um, and it's got these wonderful, all these, I don't know even, I didn't count how many, but it's got these lovely inserts here that I actually didn't, I didn't glue them in. Um, and I don't know if I would glue them, maybe I would glue them in, but um, I like the movement and it gives it a lot of depth. You know, it's not a flat card, but it's, it's not like super depthy, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Um, and that's called the tiered birthday cake. And then the final one, here's the envelope for, is this adorable ice cream soda. This is my favorite one. And, um, it is, it's got like a maraschino cherry on there and two kinds of ice cream with chocolate sauce and a soda straw on in a in you know one of those Brigham's glass uh, <laughs> those little glass cups that they used to make Sundays in so cute this is probably my favorite one um and this these are all available to you um, if you are a Cricut Access customer. So I did want to kind of mention about the Access and a couple other things. So um, before I get started, so hello, hello, hello to all my friends. Um, so what is Cricut Access? Most of you are already... Do they stand up? Oh, of course they stand up. Yes, they do. Sorry. Um, I just wanted... Yeah, they stand up like that. Like this. See? Um, so there you go. Um, yeah, they do stand up. So, um, okay. So Cricut Access is optional. Design space is free, right? It's probably always going to be free. Um, and it's got tons and tons of images in there. I think they're at like 185,000 images and over five or 600 fonts. So there's a lot there. And what they've done is they've made most all of that content available to people who become subscribers and they become subscribers of Cricut Access. And you pay for access in one of two ways. You can pay uh, by the month or you can pay by the year. If you pay by the month, that means you're an access member. If you pay by the year, it means you're a premium customer. There is a difference um, in the sense that you'd save money by doing a yearly, but it's all one payment. Um, and I believe I, I've been on a quest for the last couple of years to showcase Cricut Design Space and how um, how these things work you know, how it pays for itself, basically. I buy it every year because I find it, I, I hate, I hate looking for, for SVGs and downloading and upload. I mean, I like some of the designs out there and I do buy some, but I would rather find something in design space and do it from there. And I would rather not have to worry about these like micro payments out of my credit, my a credit card or whatever. So that's sort of, you know, my feeling on that. In addition, you'll save money on purchases at cricket.com. Um, so for instance, recently we had a machine, uh, a machine sale and I picked up a joy pack, a joy bundle, and you can't get, um, you can't use, I have a coupon. So, um, the coupon doesn't work for machines or access, so you can't get a discount on that. But because I am a um, access member premium, I got uh, a 10% off. But if I were buying materials, I would have gotten 20% off. So it's really worth it. I don't, maybe I did get 20% off. I don't know. But it was really worth getting because that 20% off you save in free shipping and uh, materials, you get 10% off um, tools and such and 20% off materials. And that's over and above your, um, 
your any savings that you might get from my coupon or a sale or anything like that. Um, which leads me to one other thing, and that is um, I am solely supported by my, like I'm self-supporting and I hate to beg for money. I'm not going to beg for money, but I had this super long conversation with my mom <laughs> yesterday and she's like, you have to make sure you ask. So I'm going to make sure I mention that if you like the content that you're getting here for free every day, uh, Monday through Friday, and then on Sundays, um, I would encourage you to sign up for something called Patreon. There's a link in every one of my videos that brings you to Patreon. I have um, had, I've got like a dozen um, subscribers now. And what that does is it charges you, let's say $5 a month uh, for all this content. And um, I would love it if you could uh, consider, I'm never going to ch charge for what I'm doing, but I also need to support myself. So I, I try to support myself through sales from Cricut, but it, it's a little difficult. Um, and then uh, I also get sales from advertising on my on my YouTube and then the third way is through Patreon. So I just thought I would yeah, it's supporting I'm not exactly starving, but it is supporting artists. Patreon. It's P A T R E O N. And again, I am not gonna sit here and beg you and beg you for hours on end that you support me, but I, I think it's worth mentioning anyway. So um and thank you if you do. Really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get on with the show. I hope you're all well. Things seem to have calmed down, um, and and uh, we're just kind of going along. It's starting to feel kind of, um, it's kind of starting to feel spring like, um, and all the animals are kind of like woo, you know, <laughs> yeah, just like that. <laughs> there's uh, there's a truck outside for Mass Save, which is like this program that they do they go into houses and they tell you how your energy is efficient or not um so of course they're gonna bark and i apologize for that so but benji says hi and teddy bear says hi so let's get on with this all right um so this is uh called a cascade card okay and um so a cascade card is essentially and i'm going to just show you let's show you this one here i'm going to ungroup this all right, and we'll take the envelope and put it aside. But in this case, I did make the envelope because I wanted you to see the size of it. It's kind of like a business um, mailer size. And then um, what this becomes is you have, these are all like just like the details here. So we'll move those aside, okay? So you end up with these two pieces that look like, uh, cascades or, you know, like they, they, they slant down. One goes, uh, from the left and the other one goes from the right. And you'll notice that there's a score line here and here, and then these are cut lines. And you'll notice that the cut lines, uh, match up. So here it's on the bottom, um, and here, here it's on the top. So when we put this together and we score it, it's going to easily go together um, and create those triangles in between. And it creates these little pockets that we then take and we put um, these extras inside. So we have this ice cream, where is it? Um, this like red Jimmy's, I call them Jimmy's, sorry, um, but uh, red Jimmy's with strawberry ice cream or something. And you will uh, you put it together and you pop it into the pocket. And then this one looks like vanilla ice cream with a chocolate sauce and um, the adorable maraschino cherry. And so that gets in the back pocket. And you notice that this one's small and this one's larger. And then of course you got the, the straw that you're going to tuck in. So um, I'm not going to um, go into great detail about cutting this because it's, uh, it's a pretty straight cut. Um, you don't really need to do much. If you have a scoring wheel, you can use it on this. Um, but honestly, a scoring stylus would work just fine too. Okay. So, um, 
So here is, these are all the pieces. And this actual back piece goes on the back of the card just to give it um, sort of a flatness and um, to sort of hold the card all together. So where do you find these? Um, I'm going to give you these files so you don't have to worry about that if you don't want to go start um, looking for them. And I did have to resize them. So let me make sure I save this. I'm going to start fresh. Um, okay, so let's start fresh. We're going to get new. And what we're going to do is we are, because we have a blank canvas, so we're going to go to images over here. This is where um, your Cricut Access comes in play. So you have images, you have text, that's where your fonts are, shapes, and then uploads. Um, and those, there are other things up here. But um, so here's mostly where we go, images and then text for fonts, shapes are just basic shapes, uploads for bringing in outside um, SVGs, okay, um, and patterns. So we're going to go to images, and when we go to images, we come upon this is the entire search engine, and it's just so overwhelming. It's so big, 183,000 and counting. I think they're trying to hit 200,000. I don't know what, by when, but it, there's a lot there. So the way that it works in my brain is to break it down by topic. Um, and so I generally um, will go to all images and use one of these uh, sort of drop down, they're not really drop down, but you know, like these uh, tiered things. So if I wanted, for instance, to do something about holidays, here is holidays, and I would do that. But in this case, I'm going to go to image sets, which is my favorite. And um, these come from two cartridges that we talked about yesterday. They're called Crazy Cool Cards. That's this one. And Crazy cute cards. That's this one. So um, these are really interesting card sets that um, we we did some from yesterday. Remember we did the grandfather clock and we did the um, this here carousel. Um, so here's where we find a lot of different cards and this is where I found the barn card and the ice cream sundae card. This is also this train, the Thomas the Train thing is also a Cascade card. Um, so you could do the same thing with that. So there's one, two, three here that are Cascade cards. And if we go to the crazy cute cards, um, there's the, there's the uh, birthday cake and there's the popcorn. And there's, I think, one more cascade card i don't know i thought there was one more mm, this is technically maybe a cascade card oh no it's the uh this crayon box is the cascade card so um we got a crayon box we got the popcorn i'm going to bring both the popcorn and the and uh well, actually what i'll do is i'll bring i'll bring the t cake and we'll go back and bring in the ice cream because everybody likes ice cream. Who doesn't like ice cream? Okay, so here they are. Um, they come in and here they're all grouped together and they are very small. Do not cut them at this size or you will drive yourself crazy. It will be a very, very small card, um, especially this one. It's very small when you consider the back pieces are maybe two inches each, and it will drive you crazy. So the first thing you want to do is ungroup and decide if you want to keep the envelope or not. Like if you're going to give this away, you might want to keep the envelope. And then you're going to take and you're going to take all the pieces and sort of pile them on top of each other to make a nice tidy uh, grouping, okay? And the reason why we're doing that is we want to resize it. So we're gonna group it again over here. And now when we resize all the pieces, all the pieces get resized so that they're appropriately sized. And we can resize up here where it says size, 
we can be very specific and just put in a number or you can sort of resize by eyeballing it like this and it will automatically adjust up here on the on the width and the height okay so um what's the a good size for these i i have been um uh, like about nine inches uh, i've been doing it at because it seems to uh, it seems to work um that way but there are a couple of things i want to tell you about it so I'm going to leave this at, at nine inches and I'm just going to move these pieces and you'll see everything has changed sizes and they're all these really fun pieces. Okay. Um, this one here, we're going to come back to, cause I have to tell you something about that. Okay. So I'm just going to regroup this and put it aside and talk about the ice cream sundae one. So the same thing with the ice cream sundae, although a little bit bigger. So ungroup it. And may, you don't have to really do much. You just can kind of um, make it as small as you can, like a really nice, neat pile, and then regroup and then resize. So right now, its width is 4.475. So I'm going to make it, I don't know, nine nine and a half, whatever works for you. Um, and let it, let us ungroup it and I'll show you. So there's the envelope and here are our two base pieces, this one and this one. And these are all the extras and you don't really need to do anything special except pick out your colors. Um, and most of these I do with just plain old, uh, solid card stock and then I usually do some pattern card stock for the envelopes okay but let me also tell you a little tiny bit about this cake one um, because there is something to consider on this and that is let's ungroup this and that is um okay so there's the envelope which is two-piece envelope cute all right so some of these colored pieces actually all of these colored pieces, aside from the actual cake, um, are grouped together um, and they're hard grouped together, okay? Um, and so what that means is you can't like ungroup them. Be and this is an in intense waste of paper in my opinion. So what I usually do, be and you know, when you send this to the mat, um, you end up having to... Uh, having to like end up using a lot of paper and it's just so wasteful. So, um, so what I would suggest that you do, cause these are hard groups, see that? And so you have here, you have the, the little bunting and then this piece. And here you have two pieces and the bunting. So there's three pieces. So it's going to take up that much space and there's no reason for it to take up that much space and waste your paper, your, your, precious paper supply. So, um, and we all love to be, uh, you know, hoarders of paper. And so I'm going to show you a little trick, um, a little more advanced, but it, it will save you paper in the long run. And so what I want to do is since these are hard, um, sort of hard grouped together is I want to duplicate by the number of pieces that I'm going to do. So this has three pieces. So I'm gonna go over to duplicate, which is up here on the right-hand side, and I am gonna hit it twice, okay? So now I have three of these, and then I'm going to select each one. So I'm gonna select this one, and I'm going down to the bottom over here to um, contour. And what I'm going to do is I am going to remove two of the three pieces. It's not really removing, it's hiding. Um, so here I just isolated this small piece and I'm gonna continue to do this, but with the other pieces. So in this case, not the small one, but the the but I'm gonna keep the tall one, and so I have to get rid of that squat one. And then here, I wanna just keep the squat one, okay? So now, these all move freely. And so when you want to put them together, they're gonna to save you a lot of space. Let's do that with all 
um, of these colors again. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. I probably would keep these two things together. I mean, it's not gonna be terrible if they cut together. So maybe one, two, three, four. So I'm going to duplicate it three times, right? So I need four. And then I start to contour out everything but um, that one isolated piece. So I just kept the bunting here. And this one, let's contour out um, the smaller pieces here. So now I have the tall piece. And again, with this, contour. I want that squat piece this time. So I'm going to contour that everything else out. And this one, I think I need, I need that top piece. And maybe I duplicated it too many times. Did I? Yeah. Cause I have this, 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 and this. Okay. So let's contour out just to keep that top little bit of frosting. Okay which I cut out in white um, because I thought it looked better in white. Um, so here you go. These are um, all now independent. These two aren't, but that's okay, you know, and um, I can get rid of this extra. Okay, so I'm going to continue on doing this with my pieces. And like I said, um, if you don't want to deal with all this stuff, I'm going to make the the uh, files available to you. And so you don't have to go through and do this. But I want you to understand the concept so that you can sort of, you know, do it on your own with something else. So sometimes you'll come across something that is... Um, that is uh, like hard grouped and the way to get around it is by um, contouring out. I hope that makes sense to folks. And so I just did it for the, for the purple or the pink. And let's just do that for the green and then we'll be done. I also will tell you that um, I use the same color browns, although here the browns look different. I'm not sure if that was the right choice for me to use the same color browns, but it, it made sense to me, so that's why I did it. Um, and so you can do either way, obviously. Um, so I don't want to, you know, this is your project, so you can decide what you want to do. Um, but I, I used the same color brown for my cake. All right. So at this point, I am now ready to cut everything out because everything is, um, is individualized, right? And I want to show you, mm -mm, oh, where did it go? Wait, where did it go? Oh, it's up here. Okay. I'm going to just get rid of this. I want to show you how this lays out on your mat. So if we hit make it, so this is why we do certain things, um, like, like save to save space. So here are um, this, and you know we always make two cards. So I'm gonna change my project copy to two, okay? So now, instead of being on several pages, I can move this around and um, maximize the use of my material. So here we go, I'm moving these things and you can overlap them as long as they're not gonna cut overlap, you see? Um, and same thing down here, you know, you can move things around and don't forget about like, you can turn things upside down if you only have a certain piece or, or a certain piece of paper that you wanna use, okay? And same here. So otherwise this would have been taking up Oh, the whole page and then you'd have to cut out two pieces of paper and this way if you're using a 12 by 12 you're using just a half of piece of a paper Do you see what I mean so that's why we have separated that now look here we have the four pieces and what a waste I'm going to use 12 by 12 but you could use eight and a half by 11 and put it on the mat sort of sideways however I'm going to use 12 by 12 because I actually have 12 by 12 um, in brown so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this second mat it's exactly the same as the first one and I'm going to click on those do uh, triple dots and I'm going to move the object Okay, and I'm going to move it to the one prior to it. Now, 
You might say, Rita, that's not going to work because they're overlapping. Yeah, but if you turn this one over around using that little circle-y thing, which I'm having trouble doing, here we go, they fit nicely on a page with even a couple inches left over. So it, this is all about like maximizing. I'm going to do the same thing with this brown. Move the object back here. Go here and find, did I move it the correct place? Where did it go? It's not here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so go here, and this one, you don't even have to move it upside down. You're just using that whole page, okay? So I want you to think like that so you can conserve your precious paper hoard. Um, and it is kind of precious, you know, when I think about it. You know, people are, where did you get that paper and everything? Um, so just want to mention that that's something you can do. Okay, so let's put these together and um, that these just cut out, you know, you just cut them out regular medium card stock. This, this one has the scoring, you know, and then you'd end up with two um, cards, two cards, one you keep, one you give away. So let's, I cut out two of the um, cake and two of the ice cream soda. So let me show you how they go together. Super easy, okay? I'm gonna move you. Work getting in the way of crafting. This is a big no-no. <laughs> okay, so let me just move my keyboard here. All right, so this is the cake one. Isn't it cute? And like I said, for me, I um, just cut out the same brown, but I could see how uh, two browns would would look nice too. So you do what you want to do, okay? And you see how it's like, it's almost like crisscross here, and there's a couple of where it crosses, okay? And then these things are just like, inserts and they go into these pockets where the crosses are all right and um and then there are just these other things that are just added so let's first um get our uh our candles together okay so we're gonna do we're gonna take all our little pieces and let's do the tall one first this is the squat one squat and the tall one okay so let's do the tall one first and then we'll do the squat one okay so what you want to do is line them up so that the yellow is in the back the white or whatever cream whatever you want to color it is in the middle and then the pink is on top or whatever color you choose and then you'll see that the um candle uh the the flame on the candle shows up without showing the yellow in the background anywhere else. So cute, right? Same thing here, but with the green. So yellow in the back, the white, and there you go. Now, you know what? Actually, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, why would I put the white in the middle? Because, and I'm not seeing the white. So in this case, I am going to put the yellow in the back, the color in the middle, and the white in the top. So then when it goes in, you're going to see all three colors. Same thing with this. So white goes in the front. Sorry, guys. So here's what you end up with. And we can glue these together in a sec. We do the same thing for this, even though it's not kind of like a pocket thing. So yellow in the back, the candles, and then this, okay? So that goes together. The bunting is pretty easy. We're just putting um, this white part so it looks like bunting there together. So let's go ahead and glue that part and then we'll be ready to put this card together. There's um, not a lot of glue with how these cards go together. So all I'm doing is I'm going to um, put glue on the back of that. Oops, a little too much there. But glue on the back of the green here so that it will adhere to the candles um, and it will look perfect that way, okay? 
Um, and I will mention, if you're new, please say hello. Uh, I'm going to sneeze in a second. <coughs> Sorry. So if you're new, please say hello because our friends that come here on a regular basis um, are very friendly and it's a very welcoming group and um, we just love new people. So we're going to say that and also what else? Um, this glue that I'm using, a lot of people ask, a lot of the new folks ask, so I'll mention it. It's called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. I'll show you the the front this is what it looks like it comes in like um a bundle where it's in like a like a honey container <laughs> with a bear honey container um but with glue in there it's good great glue and the other glue that i tend to use is also it's called arch glitter glue that's what this is but i tend to not use it in the winter time because it um it doesn't transport well so i don't want to encourage people to buy it if they can't get their hands on it right away so um and if you are looking to buy this you can buy it straight from their website or i will put a link in the description of the video that you can buy it uh, from amazon um and by using my link it supports me um, through Amazon. So I'm looking for all these little ways to, to, you know, build up this as a business, I guess. I mean, when I first started doing it, I was telling my mom about, it. I'm like, well, you know, I really just started doing this as, um, as something to keep my mind off the cancer. Cause I had cancer last year. Um, and it was great cause I met so many people and it, it gave me something to look forward to every single day. And then plus with the pandemic, everybody was tuning in and it was really fabulous. And she's like, yeah, but you have all this work that you're doing and, you know, you should get paid for it. And, um, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. I feel weird asking, um, asking for that support. So anyway, sorry, I told you I wasn't going to talk about about um she, oh she will tell you she said but you're entertaining and I'm like yeah I guess I'm entertaining I like to tell stories that comes from my family we love to tell stories oh, I'm going to tell you another one right now so uh, I went to college in upstate New York but you know I've always been a Bostonian and I lived in the city growing up and then we moved to the North Shore and um and so this is where my family has, is from um and I went to school in upstate New York and I was so ridiculed this is why often you you don't hear me uh using um a very strong accent but because I went there and I went to a school called Hamilton College which is um just outside of Syracuse and um, and I met the love of my life. Oh my God. I love this guy. I love this guy. Um, but it just did not work out. This was like 30 years ago, right? It didn't work out. And we, you know, we tried on several occasions, but it just like, just didn't work out. And so anyway, he was Ukrainian. His family was from the Ukraine and, um, they owned a farm in upstate New York. And I used to spend, my uh summers and vacations there on the farm growing up and they introduced me to all of the ukrainian um traditions especially the ones around easter such as and i've mentioned this before like the um pisanke which is uh the crafting with the eggs and um pierogies and um pelmeni which is russian actually but you know different things that uh were ukrainian and so uh, recently i was um really like craving um craving craving the um pierogies and so I reached out to him because every once in a while we just chat and that's kind of it and you know he has his own life and um and so he sent me the recipe and last night I had a, a great conversation with him on the phone um and he's just great he's like this real important businessman in in uh banking at a big name banking firm and you know like 
he just loves it and he's talking all about like how he's gonna how he's traveled everywhere and I'm like Ooh, you know I I used to travel but haven't been able to travel anyway so um we talked all about this farm and um and I the the farm that we grew up in but now his folks have you know they his father died and stuff like that but anyway it was just so awesome to talk to him and to relive all of this and how did I get on the subject oh um because we were talking about what I do and I said you know it's just like really creative and stuff and he said well I you are just a creative person, you know, and, and so this is your creative outlet. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, but he goes, no, but like in your, in your like presentation style, the way you talk to people, it's creative. And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. You're right. You know? Um, and I was just thinking about that. And he told me a story that I actually forgot about. Um, and it was just really funny anyway. Um, okay. Sorry to get off the, and I lost some people on that. I'm okay with that, all right? So here are the two main pieces, and you see, as I was talking, I was folding them like this. Um, and we're going to, I wanna make sure that I put them in correctly. Okay, so the way that they're going to line up, I'm gonna go up a little bit, is so that when they are lined up here on the top, that this is going to be all one, piece because that's where we're going to put this small thing okay and then um what we're going to do so we hold them this way and then here's the cutout on the back flip and here is the one on the flap and here's the cutout f on the bottom of the back piece so we're going to um sort of just connect them in this way you see what i'm doing so it's like that's the first cross and then for the next fold because there's there's a uh, three cuts here so for the next one we're going to take and put it here top and bottom we're creating like a um the crisscross you see so there's that one piece and boom there is our accordion how easy is that no glue just like this and so now we just need to um decorate it um, you will need to sort of play a little tiny bit with, uh, with like, you know, pressing it down a little. Um, but here is the basic card. Isn't that great? And this is what it looks like on the bottom. And this is what it looks like before we put in the stuff. That's kind of uh, accordion type style, but it's called cascade because it starts off tall and it comes down, right? So now we take our pieces that we have already done and the lar the tall piece goes into the back and it slides in. You could glue it. I didn't glue it. I suppose you could glue it, but it's not coming out, right? And then here is the the squat piece, and that goes into this pocket. And then the only thing that you have to put together are the bunting and this on the top, okay? So this is the technique that you'll use for any kind of cascade card. Um, and you will look at you might want to look at the handbooks, um, which I showed you yesterday. If you go to cricket.com handbooks, they will show you um, how to put it together. But in this case, what I did was um, I just put the bunting sort of, I didn't firmly attach it because I wanted some movement there. But I did the bunting sort of like this on either side. Hold on. On either side, I put the glue whoop, and crossed it or something. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. And that way it moves with it. And that is your card. Um, that is the cascade card. And see, I mean, it. once you put those things in there, it doesn't, it doesn't expand. Um, you, it doesn't expand all that much after that. But that's the technique you know, and you end up with 
um, a very 3D looking card that will lay flat that you can put into um, an envelope. Okay, and you can cut out the envelope easily. And so the next one that we're gonna to put together, I'm gonna to show you, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do the envelope. So here is the ice cream one. Everybody loves this one, and I do too. Um, and I cut it out all in cardstock, but I used red glitter cardstock from Cricut. Um, and I use that for the all the red parts, which I think it looks really cute. Um, and then I just use solid colors and for the envelope. Very simple. It's just like what we did before. You're going to fold at the score lines on all four sides. Um, and I, I know you guys know that I just don't like to make envelopes. It's, you know, the thing is I don't like super thick envelopes and, and, uh, I have paper that's thinner, like more scrap, scrapbook paper, but it, it's in the vault. And so it makes it a little hard to, um, to get to. So, um, I always make my envelopes if the card is a unique looking card okay so in this case we fold and at all the score lines backward and forward and this is how it goes together we're going to put some glue on the bottom flap this is the top flap it's smaller so the bottom flap is bigger we're going to just put some glue not all the way to the top um and we are going to press and hold right there and if you want to you could get out your scraper or your bone folder or whatever and give those a really good pressing and make sure that it holds so there's the envelope for the ice cream one which i think is adorable yeah I, you know i like pattern <laughs> I like patterned paper so um i like to use it at least once in every project so there's the envelope let's put together the ice cream cone um and we'll see how quickly this one goes together um it's so easy okay so here are two main pieces we're going to put those aside and including this one okay we're going to put it aside um and so we'll work on these pieces first so we're going to put together the straw we're going to put together the strawberry ice cream part and then we're going to put together the vanilla ice cream part so let's do the straw first all we do is if you can get it off of the thing um all we do is put an there's a little bit of um, gluing involved in this, a little more gluing involved in this one. Uh, okay. So we're going to put, what? This is sort of like the, um, remember we did the Merry Christmas banner um, at Christmas in the candy cane stripes? That's exactly how this is. It creates the stripes by layering two colors. So there is our straw. Well, you guys will do that better because um, I didn't do it all that wonderfully. Actually, I can put the straw in this way and then you can't see that part. Okay, yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, so then um, for the strawberry, we're gonna uh, put some glue on the back and all these little cutouts for the jimmies. Uh, or whatever they are, uh, sprinkles. <laughs> I can't get used to calling them sprinkles. That's a that's a New England thing. Okay, and so here we go. We're putting that on there, and yeah, you're not seeing uh, too much of the glitter, but what you are seeing of the glitter is really um, nice. And then the next piece is what's this? This is like extra. Um, has the maraschino cherry but before you do that we got to put the hot saw the hot chocolate whatever the hot fudge sauce on there i want to make sure i put that on correctly so this is the actual yeah and a little tiny bit of glue and here we go sure it's layered up there 
I don't know, maybe I did do it. I might have done it opposite. And then um, here goes the cherry. Okay, now this piece and this piece, we're going to put aside until the very end. Come on, stick. You you have to use a little more glue with uh, glitter cardstock, sadly. Um, okay, so we're going to put all of these pieces aside. I'm going to take our two main pieces. We're going to fold at the score line. So they are two score lines and three cuts here, okay? And I like to score going both ways because it just creates more um, movement in your card, okay? So here are the two pieces. I know they look sort of similar. They are kind of similar. They're a little different than, than the, um, than the, uh, the cake but they are different because this one here has the top cut and this one has the bottom cut okay and that's what we're going to do we're going to take and we are going to put the top cut into the bottom cut like this that's the first part then we're going to do that in the middle top into the bottom this can get a little tiny bit hairy where you're like, is this really what I'm doing? But it, it's working fine. So you're creating basically two pieces that sit together. And then when you open them up, there are your, um, there are your accordion or your little pockets, right? And then you push down and there is your whole thing. And then... You're just gonna take the larger piece, pop that in there. I probably would secure this because it goes in really well and so I'm afraid it would fall out. And then you put the small piece here. And then when you're done with that, you're going to take and put the, the chocolate sauce on the edge. That's what this is. I think it actually goes this way. Yep, yeah, because that's the textured side is up. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on that. Okay. Okay. And um, you still have one piece that you have to put in, but let's do this. I'm just gonna put a teeny tiny bit of glue just to kind of hold it in there. I don't wanna make it completely uh, immo immovable, Im immobile um, so just a little bit of glue so it won't come popping out see um, and just a little little tiny bit and then we'll take our straw and tuck it in there wherever you want to I think I'll tuck it in over here and this I also would put just a tiny bit of glue on the back Okay, and then the last piece, which would be a great part to do um, a sentiment on. So if, you know, it's a birthday, you could probably do a sentiment like, it's your birthday, let's party, or, you know, here's some ice cream for your birthday, or something like that. That's what this is, okay? And it goes on to the back. This got cut a little bit, which is yucky. Or you can use it for a place to do your hand you know, a hand lettered sentiment. Um, this piece, which I think is a very thoughtful piece, isn't available on this. I think it, there should have been like a piece on the back. And the same thing with, okay, so let me just show you the, the end result. So there's our end result, a really cute ice cream card that's movable like that. And here is our cute little envelope and it goes right in there because I sized it with the card. Then I'd glue it here with maybe double stick tape and it would go in the mail like that or you can give it as a gift, right? Um, yeah, the, yeah, you guys can think of some great things. So, um, one thing I wanted to show you about the popcorn and the, 
and I'll just show you these again. So this one is the barn. And what I found out about the barn is that you have to put two sets of animals in um, each pocket because there's the goat with, I guess, a cow and a pig. And so they go both in here. And then here's the horse and the rooster and they go in there. And then, of course, the, that classic barn door and um, at the top. And you get this black piece where you could either put a sentiment or whatever you want to do. Put a sticker or something like that. And it's just so beautiful. So that's there. Um, but on the popcorn one, there wasn't this piece on the front. I think it's just an oversight. So I want to take you back to um, the screen, okay? And show you what I did for the popcorn one, okay? So I'm going to cancel this. And let me just go grab that popcorn one. Oop. And I'm just going to show you a little trick that I did so that it would look more together and um, and it looks a little more professional. So I'm going back to images and I'm going to my image sets and I'm gonna type in crazy and hit return. And I'm going to go to crazy cute. I think it's, yep, there it is. I'm gonna pull this in and it's gonna come in real small. So I'm going to, just to, so you can see it, I'm gonna ungroup it, and then here's the envelope. But see here, this piece um, is like the front piece here. This would be a great place for a sentiment. So this little oval, you could put a sentiment. But this piece is supposed to go on the front here, and they they didn't offer like an extra like the the white background so what i did was let me just make this all bigger so you can see it so group it and just make it bigger um so what i did was i took this piece the red piece i duplicated it then i used um the contour feature and i contoured out all of the little cuts just keeping the outline, okay? Then I changed it to white. And now it can, let's go to the back, send to the back. It goes behind here and it just looks a little more finished. So um, I don't know why they, it seems like it's an oversight. So this goes together the same way. There's these two pieces that you would um, make larger and then they have the tall part and then the squat part. And then this actually three piece goes right on the front of the card, okay? So do keep that in mind if you're going to do the, um, this card and I will give you the file after I get off with you. I'll give you the file um, for all four of these cards and I do hope you try it. I saw a lot of people were trying um, the cards from yesterday so I'm so jazzed that you did um, and I hope you continue to do those things. Now, tomorrow, remember, I'm going to be late. Probably won't be here until... Uh, like 10 o'clock, I think I'll probably start at 10 o'clock. So um, probably won't be here till 10. So um, I hope you don't mind that. And we're going to be doing some Lori Whitlock um, projects. We're actually gonna do some, they're box cards technically, okay? And they, these cards do need to be purchased. Um, and I'm not gonna give you the link to the one specifically that I um, am going to do simply because she has oodles, oodles and oodles of uh, files. And you can find her at, um, if you go to a browser and you just type in, let me get my keyboard here, and you type in, oh, come on, shop. Let me just click on this. Mm-mm-mm. I have that um, new update on my Mac and I don't really like it. It makes it really slow. Okay, so we type in shop, 
www.lauriewhitlock.com. See right here, comes up in my memory. And her cards, which is where she, you know, we did those cards, those box cards earlier in the week. Um, she's kind of like the woman um, more, you know, Oh, wait, what am I going to show you? Maybe if I see what? What do you want to see? See you tomorrow? Somebody wants to see something. I hope someone an will answer me. I'm going to make those cards to fit. So who's asking, what do you need to know, Kirsten? Is it Kirsten or Annette? What do you need to know? And I will answer. Um, so go to shop.lauriewhitlock.com and you will see um, that she has a lot of great cards and if you go to the cards and you go to box cards you will see that she has a bunch and they're all different like shapes and stuff and then they have different so I just figure I want to show you how the inserts go in on these which is slightly different than the ones we got from design space okay so um so if you want to pick up or you maybe already picked up um a card or something uh from Laurie Whitlock and you want to know how to put it together then join me tomorrow at 10 o'clock all right and I don't know who's asking read the method I use to resize I wrote earlier I'll have to do that afterwards and that because we're already at 10 and I and I'm losing people and I gotta go take Owen to um to get tested all right everyone thanks so much for coming today don't forget that I'm going to be reposting this on YouTube um with all the links listed in the um description and I hope that you watch the replay and don't forget to subscribe and then when you subscribe put your name in for the cobalt blue cutie thanks everybody i hope you have a wonderful day we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 talk to you later bye thanks for the stars everyone thank you